In this video, we'll take a look at transcriptional control in prokaryotes. We'll take a look at the operon model, specifically the LAC operon, the most studied and first recognized model of transcriptional control. An operon regulates the process of building of a protein by turning genes on or off depending on if they're needed. A well-studied example of an operon is the LAC operon. In E. coli bacteria, the LAC operon turns on the building of enzymes necessary to metabolize lactose whenever there is an absence of glucose, the preferred energy source. So sometimes bacteria will find itself in an environment where glucose is absent, but it still has the genetic machinery to process lactose. It's easier to process glucose, but if glucose isn't present, it's time to turn on the production of the enzymes to start digesting lactose, and that's what the LAC operon is for. An operon is a unit of DNA containing a cluster of genes under the control of a single section of DNA. The operon components are structural genes, which lie immediately next to each other. They code for enzymes to break down lactose and are transcribed as a group. The operator is the on-off switch of transcription. It's a short sequence of DNA where the repressor binds, preventing RNA polymerase from attaching to the promoter. The promoter is a short sequence of DNA where RNA polymerase first attaches when the genes are to be transcribed. Further upstream of these genes is the regulator gene. It's some distance away on the DNA. It regulates the activity of the structural genes. It codes for a repressor protein which normally, when glucose is present, actively binds to the operator and prevents RNA polymerase from binding to the promoter and transcribing the genes for lactose metabolism. The repressor protein is always coded for and is therefore always present. Let's take a look at what happens when glucose is present. When glucose is present, it is not desirable to waste cellular energy creating enzymes to digest lactose. The genes that code for these enzymes need to be repressed or shut off. The repressor protein binds to the operator. RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, but it's unable to move past the operator because it's being blocked by the repressor. As a result, the genes that code for the enzymes that break down lactose cannot be transcribed into the enzymes to break down lactose. What happens when glucose is absent but lactose is present? Well, this is when the LAC operon turns on and here's how it happens. When glucose is absent and lactose is present, it is desirable to have the enzymes that break down lactose. RNA polymerase should be allowed to move past the operator and transcribe the structural genes. The repressor must be inhibited so that it cannot bind to the operator. Lactose binds to the repressor, changing its shape. As a result, the repressor cannot fit into the operator and block RNA polymerase. As a result of that, RNA polymerase can move past the operator. And transcribe the genes for lactose production. The enzymes for digestion of lactose are produced and lactose is digested. Even the one bound to the repressor. When this occurs, the repressor reverts to its original shape and binds to the operator, thereby blocking RNA polymerase once again. As a result, the genes for the breakdown of lactose are once again no longer transcribed. This self-regulatory mechanism in E. coli bacteria ensures that whenever lactose is absent, energy to create enzymes for its breakdown will not be used. If lactose is present and glucose is not, the enzymes for lactose breakdown will be available when lactose itself inhibits the repressor protein. This summarizes the LAC operon and how it functions to control the production of enzymes for lactose metabolism.